Hey there everyone, welcome back to another Game Vault video. As always, I'm Captain Beefy with the Game Vault, and it's another day, and it's another round of layoffs in the tech industry, more specifically in the gaming industry. Well, let's cue up the music and we'll talk about it. So one of the latest and biggest ones that's going on right now is Microsoft lay layoffs 2024. Bethesda job cuts. So the company's closing down four game development studios, Arcane Austin, Alpha Dog Studios, Roundhouse Games, and Tango Gameworks. Um, yeah, this is, this is bad. I mean, this is really bad. I'm no big fan of Microsoft by any stretch of the imagination. I've never owned an Xbox or anything like that. I've always been a PlayStation um, kind of guy, but this is not a, a, a console war, this is not an attack on them or anything like that, because I know Sony laid off a bunch of people recently, and a lot of these companies are laying off tons of people left and right all over the place, and it's, it's absolutely horrible right now, it's like this major apocalypse going on in gaming and it's hard to um, you know, put a finger on what, what the problem, well it's not really hard to put a finger on what the problem is, I think we got a couple things going on. I think we've got like some oversaturation in the market. There's so many games coming out all the time, right? Big games, and games are getting bigger, more involved, and more time consuming, right? So back in the day, you got a game that used to be, you beat the game, you moved on, and you went and you, and you started a new game. Nowadays, you've got different types of games. You've got, you know, you still have that type of game, like a Resident Evil, where, yeah, you might play through it two or three times to get everything done to check out some alternate endings or to unlock some extra stuff, uh, play it through on a super hard mode. Maybe they'll introduce a mercenaries mode like they did with uh, RE4, you know, Dead Space, you could do a new game plus, you know, there's a lot of games that did things like that that would get you to play through it again. But a second and an even third playthrough, that's, and that's it. You know, eventually you're like, all right, I have beat this game every way I can beat it and I'm done. But today's landscape, games are bigger. You've got more open world games, you know. And you look at these huge, huge games from Ubisoft that have come out in recent years. The Assassin's Creed, um, the Origins, Valhalla, and um, Odyssey, for instance. They finally toned it back down a little bit with um, Mirage. You know, they also had the big games like uh, um, the Far Cries and all that. You've got huge survival games that can take... You know, and, and they're massive multiplayer games a lot of times, like Ark Survival Evolved, the one I'm involved with, right? This is a game that you can play on. You can play it single player. You can play it on a server. You can play it on a rented server or a hosted server at your own house. You can play it on an official server. You can play PvP. You can play PvE. And it's literally a game that can go on forever and ever because they keep adding new content to it. And it's fun. There's always new ways to, to do things, especially with the addition of mods and all that. You know, Bethesda releases monsters like Skyrim and Fallout 4 and, and most recently um, Starfield, for instance. These big, you know, single-player games. And while they may or may not be open world all the time, most of them are, or at least for the most part, semi-open world. Um, but they're still big games, right? A lot of stuff to do, a lot of side quests. It's, there's no longer a game that's just a simple do this and you're done. Now it's do this and you're done, but along the way, you know, help get this cat out of the tree, help find my father's underwear, help do this, help do that, help feed the family, you know, all these little side quests and collectibles and all these other things, and it's just geared to keep you in the game longer, 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 longer. Now that's just one aspect of it, right? So, it, you know, in the past you could play a game, you could play 15, 20, 30 hours and be done. Now there's literally hundreds of hours going to games like that. And then you, then you come up to these open these um big games like hell raider hell um divers 2 and stuff like that or your destinies these games that are online all the time and your multiplayer online competing games that have seasons to them you know look at diablo 4 right there's a new season every few months um and just it gives you new content it gives you a reason to keep coming back you know and playing and playing and playing and it's absolutely crazy and it just eats up a lot of time you know, all these live service games that are out there, your Fortnites and stuff like that, just complete time sinks. 
And I think the market is oversaturated right now with games like that. And I think it's it's hurting a lot of these bigger studios because a lot of times these games are failing. And games are getting more expensive to make. And if you're making AAA games and they're failing, you are losing a fortune. Look at the recent um, issue with oh, what was it? Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League. You know, that game screwed the pooch. You know, it really did poorly. You got so many games that are doing that upon release, it's not even funny. Big open world game, Forspoken last year, took a crap, you know? And, and who knows how many tens to hundred million dollars go into a game? I don't know. I mean, the, the budgets are up there. They're insane. I think the, the, the costs are top heavy. I guarantee you that once this apocalypse is over, gaming companies are going to restructure how they do things, you know? Um, because I think right now it's, it's obviously unsustainable with all the layoffs going on. Think about every studio that lays off a ton of people. From these big ones like Bethesda to the little ones like um, the one I talked about a couple days ago that did the uh, Deliver Us the Moon and all that. You know, it's just 12 guys, but still, that's, you know, 12 more guys out there in the workforce looking for jobs, and now they're competing against who knows how many were just released from the Bethesda studios. And it's sad. So I'm hoping... You know, the, the, things are going to get worse before they get better. I can guarantee you that. For the consumer, however, for you and me, the game player, I think we will benefit from this in the long run because these guys are going to learn how to make games and make games in a little bit of a cheaper way. They're going to learn how to trim the fat from games. You know, maybe we don't need to hire all these consultation firms to come in and add their two cents to games and creating bloat or changing things or whatever. You know, maybe they'll do that. Maybe they'll they'll say, you know what? Let's focus on something that is short and sweet and good. You know, let's create some good characters. Let's create a good story. Put some good game mechanics in there. Release the game and see how it does. If it does great, we'll make a sequel for it in two years. You know, and just kind of go back to that cycle where you've got smaller budgets, smaller teams, smaller games that are released on a more frequent basis. You know. I am 54 years old, and the way games come out now, and for some things like a Fallout game, how often does a Fallout game come out? I probably have less than three Fallout games left to be released in my lifespan. You know, and that's a crazy thought to have, right? Five, six, and I will probably never see beyond seven. And I might not even see seven, depending on how long it takes to come out there. That's crazy. I remember when, um, Skyrim was released in 2011, you know, and yeah, we've had the Elder Scrolls online since then, but that's not that's not another Elder Scrolls game. That's an online game. That's a massive online game. You know, <laughs> it was 2011. It's been what 13 years now since that game. How long does it take? You know, and I understand Bethesda's doing other stuff and all that, but yeah, how long does it take? Oh, it's absolutely nuts. Let's look at, what is this, IGN, I think? Yeah, IGN. So they're going to talk about this a little bit. Um, so Arcane Studios released Redfall last year for the Xbox. And if you all know anything about the game, it pretty much was DOA. It was a terrible game upon release. It just didn't live up to the promise and all that. There's a lot of people that tried to make it sound good. But I th overall, it was pretty poorly received by the community. Not a great game. And, um, you know, is that what killed this studio? Maybe that had something to do with them all getting laid off? I don't know. But, um, there was a promised uh, DLC. They're not getting it. So, Bethesda or Microsoft's going to do something to make up for that. But I guarantee you, there's going to be demands for refunds, and there's going to be a lot of pissed off players that bought that, you know, because a lot of people will buy a game with the DLC upon release, even though the DLC hasn't been announced yet, hasn't been released yet, you know, you say, hey, for an extra 20 bucks or 30 bucks, depending on the type of gamer you are, you might just say, you know what, I don't want to have to worry about it when it comes out, I'll get it now, this looks like a good game, I want to play it, and I want to see more of it, and, you know, not, not always the smartest thing to do, and I do it a lot, I'm not making fun of people for doing it, I do it all the time, but it is what it is, so... Ah, yeah. So, 
This reprioritization of titles and resources means a few teams will be realigned to others and that some of our colleagues will be leaving us. So some people are going to be canned, some people are going to remain and all that. I wish everybody the best. I hope they get out there. I hope they find jobs with other studios. Maybe get out there and create your own little, you know, independent studio and make some original games on your own and and try to compete with uh, some of these bigger AAA companies because some of the best games out there come from these smaller studios. And we get a lot of heart sometimes. But here's the changes that are going into effect with this. Uh, Arcade Austin, the studio will close with some members of the team joining other studios to work on projects across Bethesda. Arcane Austin has a history of making impactful and innovative games and it is a pedigree that everyone should be proud of. Redfall's previous updates will be its last as we end all development on the game, the game and its servers will remain online for players to enjoy and we will provide make good offers to players who purchase the Hero DLC. How long will they remain online for? That's what I want to know. That's kind of crazy, you know. And this is the problem. One of the many problems with modern gaming, you know, is that necessity to be online. And if there's no option for a different way to host one of these games, then that kind of sucks when the uh, studio shuts it down because inevitably they're going to shut it down. It's going to be a money sink. It's just going to be money draining out of Microsoft's pockets. The right accountant's going to look at it one day and go, yeah, let's cut those off. Alpha Dog Studios, this studio will also close. We appreciate the team's creativity in bringing Doom to new players. Mighty Doom will be sunset on August 7th and we will be turning off the ability for players to make any purchases in the game. Tango Gameworks. Now, Tango Gameworks will also close. We are thankful for their contributions to Bethesda and players around the world. Hi-Fi Rush will continue to be available to players on the platforms it is today. So Hi-Fi Hi Rush was pretty successful from my understanding. And I know it's available now on PlayStation and it's a, it's a game I've like, I've thought about. I'm like, that looks kind of fun and all that. It looks kind of goofy and all. I don't know if I'd buy it, but it does look fun and I can see the appeal in it. So. You know, they released a successful game, at least from my understanding it was successful, and they're getting closed down. <sighs> and last but not least, we've got Roadhouse Games. This, The team at Roadhouse Games will be joining ZeniMax Online Studios. Roadhouse has played a key role in many of our recent game launches, and bringing them into Zoss to work on the Elder Scrolls Online will mean we could do even more to grow the world that millions of players call home. So good for Roadhouse Games, they're keeping jobs, at least some of them. Uh, going into the Elder Scrolls Online, hopefully it, it works for them and all that, but phew. yeah, it's tough, man. It's really tough out there, and I, like I said, I wish everybody the best. Um, tell me what you guys think down below. Do you think we're in for some lean times up ahead? Do you think a lot of studios are going to be closing down? I, I think we're going to see some major cuts. I think the next one we're going to see some huge cuts from is going to probably be Ubisoft. I just... I used to love their game so much, and lately it they just it's frustrating. You know, it's very frustrating to look at Ubisoft and how they're doing things and all that. But I'm hoping in the end this turns out to be a good thing. These guys get jobs, new studios are created, independent studios. Um, some of the less savory elements of gaming disappear. Hopefully, you know, we get rid of some of these. Um, DEI consultation firms and all that as people realize they're a waste of money and studios should be throwing money away at these consulting firms that bring nothing to the game other than division you know and aggravation hopefully that's a thing hopefully they you know hopefully they look at ways to create a good game that they can profit off of and create a sustainable business model without hurting the customer base without taking money out of our pockets on a consistent basis. Microtransactions, um, uh, passes, you know, season passes, and constant DLCs, and all this other nonsense and all. Some of it's good, some of it has a place out there, but a lot of it, you know, it's just, it can be aggravating sometimes. I have no problem buying a full-size game and spending the $70 on it, or the $50, whatever, depending, AAA, AA, whatever. And I have no problem if I enjoy that game spending an additional amount of money for a season pass for DLC if I enjoy the game. It's like, well, oh, you want to offer me more of this game? Great. You know. In the past, some studios have done some shady stuff where they lock the 
a real ending of the game behind it, or they'll do stuff like that. There's just some shady stuff going on sometimes, but for the most part, it's additional stuff. Look at Dead Island 2. The game played through. Done. And then they give you two DLCs that were like little offshoot weird funky stories in different areas and all that. Cool. You gave me new stuff. You gave me new places to visit. You gave me new weapons. You gave me new um, zombies to fight. Thank you. That's how you do it. Anyway, like I said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, I'm Kenta Beefy with the Game Vote. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell for notifications. I'll see you guys next time and hopefully some better news. Until then, peace.